You're about to listen to a podcast from the Firearms Radio Network. For more, visit firearmsradio.net. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 514. This show is brought to you by VZ Grips, Walker Defense, Primary Arms, and XS Sights. Tonight, I have for you a handcrafted holster review. Then we'll probably talk about the Mac 1014, Advocates, and Bursas. As you may know, we showcase guns, gear, and anything else you might be interested in. We do our best to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm Chad Wallace, as you probably already know. And with me tonight, we have Rusty from somewhere in unknown Tennessee. Tony, who's in also Florida man this week. And Rob, our standby Florida man. <laughs> so, XS Sites. I love you too, Chad. I know. For over 25 years, XS Sites has helped you get on target faster, offering tritium night sights in all different types and styles. Low light is no longer an obstacle. Most options come with a brightly colored photoluminescent ring. This colored ring makes them work great in daylight by drawing your eye right to that front sight. XS Sights has sight styles for everybody. Big dots, ghost rings, standard notch and post, minimalist, suppressor height, all offering trinium options. And available for a plethora of firearm types from shotguns to handguns, XS Sights has you covered for all your low light sighting needs. Now, our XS Sight product of the week this week is their line of F8 night sights, which are tritium dot over dot, so it's a two dot tritium system. These sights are taller, so they will work with some optics uh, just because of that. You can use code GGR20 and get 20% off almost everything over at XSSites.com. And I do know that Rob received his Desert Eagle XS Sights, I don't know, a few days ago or today or I don't know. but No, it was today. I came, I came home and in the mailbox was these sights right here for my Desert AL. Nice, nice. Oh, this is nice. the blackout rear sight and the nice little front tritium sight. Now I just gotta put them on the desert eagle and get in the rain. Have <laughs> well, some fun. I, the, the engineer who designed those, me and Rob, we, we just run well, across. We had fun show. That man, he's like, we were we were looking at the shotgun sights, the stake on shotgun sights, right? And uh, yeah. and then he's like, well, I designed them in the desert eagle sights, and Rob was like, I got a eagle, and then like it was like romance right off the bat they just connected at the hip <laughs> what can i say when you guys get together we you know i mean yeah and and the thing i don't know for this but they are excess is one of the fa- companies that makes sites for desert eagles so you know you got that going for you and, and very few people do that because it's a limited market i mean desert eagles are like an eighteen hundred dollar gun, so not a whole lot of people buy a Desert Eagle. Because why you want to buy a Desert Eagle? Eh, just because I want to buy one. So I mean, you know, it's it's one of those trying to find a, a site for that. It's like trying to find a site uh, for my uh, FN series pistols. Which oh, I think they also make sites they, for the FN pistols. They do, <laughs> they do. See, and that's going to be I, the next thing I'm going to hit them up for. I want some <laughs> sites for my FN pistols. <laughs> I, I've been I've been looking. You talk about the Desert Eagle. I'm not I, I, the 50 A doesn't really enthuse me too much. I've been looking at the 357 Magnum, but I really want the Coonan, but you can't find them. Dude, you can find the Desert Eagles easier. That's I'll true. Be you. you better watch when your mouth, dude. I take new people to the range. Uh, I'll just say this: I take new people to the range, and I'm like, what, what gun would you really really like to shoot? A Desert Eagle. Okay, I got one. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. Come on. And I, I give them the, the Desert Eagle, and they're like, and, and it, it, it's just one of those things where they're like, oh. And of course, it's not the first kind. Let them shoot if they're a new shooter. I, I take them all the way up from twenty twos to nines to forty fives, and it's like the last one I get. I let them shoot, but I mean, they people new gun shooters really like to shoot a Desert Eagle. Just well, I guess just because it's the gun from the Matrix. I I I think it's just. It's a Desert Eagle. That's why people want to, which it's leads leads us <laughs> leads us nicely into what we did in firearms. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with Rob. He got well, sights in. Let's see. Saturday worked around the house, and Sunday, it, and Tony's down here in Florida, 
eight o'clock in the morning until ten o'clock on Sunday. It freaking drizzled all day long down here. You couldn't go outside to do anything. It sucked. So <laughs> I didn't do jack up for guns on this weekend. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you, Rusty. Did you do anything? I saw you got something in cool, but I did. I can't show it on YouTube. Yeah, though, but I'll tell you about it. I've got actually. I got three something. Well, I think I talked about the Bursa last week. Yeah. Um, I got. I've been. I've probably put uh, another brick of ammo through it, and then I also got our buddy Dave. Dave Kowak me, <laughs> Kowak us. <laughs> Dave sent me. Dave sent me the ten millimeter uh, high point carbine, and I tell you what, I've been. I've been getting love mail and hate mail both off of that thing. But I tell you why, I, I enjoy it. It's a good. It's a once it gets broke in. I think it's going to be a fantastic little carbine, and I really, I've really been enjoying it. Yeah, check those set screws on the front sight. Uh, I don't <laughs> care if they swing around. I, I've got I put a I put a uh, a cheap trips and uh, trace red dot on there. Well, yeah, you and, need and, uh, that. You need that iron sight because when that crimson trace breaks, <laughs> you're going to need it. I use I use it like a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, that'll work good as a good club. Yeah, but uh, it's been going good, and then I got today. I got in the. Um, the Fox Truck Mock Ranch Rifle, five five six, and I have played around with it all day, just setting it up. And I started out with the right on optic on there, uh, the LPVO, the one to eight, and then for like two hours, I just shouldering it and just back and forth shouldering the rifle. Well, you know they're buffer, they're bufferless systems, so they set up just a little bit higher, and then it's got the eight seventy shotgun stock on there. And I just could not get my head positioned correctly on there without having to look around and try to find, look through the optics. So I pulled it off and just so happened, I got my edible STD or SDR, whichever one you want to call no, it. No, it's an STD. We know what you have. A- STD. <laughs> we uh, know what it is. The enclosed emitter, uh, green dot in is one I ordered. And I put it on and then I went up taking it back off and uh, because... The, the original base on it was the tall base, and they, they actually sent me a low base, too, a low mount riser. I put it on there, and it's just just perfect. It's perfect. So that's what I'm going to run on it. And um, I'm, 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 I've got a bunch of 20-round magazines ordered for it. I want 20-round magazines because like I consider it a ranch rifle, and that's I'm trying to make the theme of a ranch rifle. So I ordered a... I ordered 10 20 round magazines and I did order some uh, some more mags. I don't know why I needed them, 30 rounders, but I did order some 30 round. They're all stainless steel mags um, for it and for my other rifles. So uh, when they come in, I'm going to put a bunch of rounds to it before I take it to a class next month. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder, and I should ask Foxtrot Mike this, if the Boyd's at one 870 stock. Because it's got an adjustable butt plate and an adjustable cheek riser, if you could buy one of those and put on it, if it would work. The the the, the mount is looks just like an eight seventy, and I've been looking at folding stocks, and um, I found some. Uh, I can't remember. I've looked at a bunch of them, but I found some folding stocks like they're like AR style adjustable, and uh, I'm gonna do a little. I'm gonna pull this one off. Just by looking at the the, the schematics they sent me, I'm gonna look and just make sure that it's all compatible and fits in there. I so, hear you. I might I might change out that 870 stock for for a folding with a with a adjustable cheek piece on it and, I got and go for there. Yeah, that sounds good. Now, but I tell you what, he said he's got some high fire triggers in for it, and um, well, they should be here soon. He's gonna send me one of those to go in it, so that's gonna be nice because. Now, the trigger pull is something that you'll have to get used to. Because it pivots off the bottom, it not from the, the top. top. No, it pivots off, off the top. I thought it pivoted off the bottom of the trigger guard. No, it's at the top. Yeah. The very top. No. It's, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, a, yeah, it's weird. It's you, you, should, nice. you should look at it. it but, yeah, it's it's different. I, I remember that from SHOT Show. They definitely have a different trigger pull. Not bad, but just – No, no, it's just – it's just a different manual of arms. Yep, yep. Most everything's the same because what what I've noticed today, I pull it up because it looks like an AR platform at the bottom. When I pull it up, I'm automatically going 
pistol or, grip. Pistol grip, and it's not there. Yeah. So I have to keep telling myself I'm shotgunning this thing. Uh huh. And and try to wrap because I've got so used. I run so many ARs. I've got that pistol grip, and I don't have it on this. Yeah. And so, and it's just been totally different because then I've got the front, the 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 H case sort of front pull of uh, cocking lever on it. So, yeah, yeah, because they, you know, they I got stuff from them also. Uh, I got one of their FM 15s, I think they are, which mm-hmm. literally it came in like the day after last show or whatever. So. And it has that, fr- it's also a complete, you know, it's a pistol because he sent the 12 and a half, uh, but it's got that front cocking little kind of HK, but it doesn't lock in. Uh, right. it, and, and it works, it works well uh, because it's, like I said, it's self-contained. This one has a pick rail on the back. It's got a folding brace. Uh, now, of course, the one I got, he sent it with a hyper fire trigger. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, and they're they're still in the they're still in the pre production phase of some of their stuff is what he was telling me. Like they have the X thirty nine coming out, and but they're but before they do those, they got they're working on the global ordnance monolith. Yeah, they probably they have, have they have to. Yeah. That's going to be the gun that I think is going to get the most attention of any of them. And I told him that day mm-hmm. because with that folding with, with that hinge stock. Right on the H- rifle, hinged receiver, hinged receiver whatever you want to, on whatever the rifle. Receiver. I'm trying to find nope, the right word. It's important. It, it's a hinged yeah, receiver. It's important you use the right words. It's yeah, important that's why you use the right, right words. words. Yes, that's why I was trying. That's why I kept backtracking there. The hinge receiver mm-hmm. and is lightweight, and and that's what I've been talking about. I told him, I said, this is going to be the gun that that sets you apart from everybody right here. And and the thing is, is after like. He's basically the one he sent me as the predecessor. It's the pistol version of the global ordnance monolith, essentially, except it's the predecessor. So it's it's on their lower, not the, you know, it doesn't have like the global ordnance pistol version. Instead of having the folding receiver has the pick rail built into it. And the one he sent me being theirs does not have the pick rail built into it on the rear. Not, yeah, not a big deal. The brown, you can run the run the brown ales, uh, stoner triangle triangle brace on that, correct? Yeah, yeah. In the and actually, uh, he sent a brace, but the brace I'm going to run on it. Well, I'm going to run that one until I get done with the review. Is I'm probably going to put the Strike Industries dual folder on it. Okay. Uh, it's probably what I'm going to end up doing, but I got that in. Uh, I also. When we talked about the Ross Martin, they contacted us and asked if I wanted one for review. Of course, I said yes. Uh, it came in. Uh, I was surprised. I didn't expect it because when I went to go pick up the Foxtrot mic, the Ross Martin was also there. So I got to pick them up both up at the same time. I took them out this weekend, put about 175 rounds through the Ross Martin thing shoots nice uh i was really impressed with how soft it shoots uh it does come with three back straps so uh even the the women in this household thought it felt good they didn't shoot it but they put it in their hand it's full ambi mag release and slide release now is that's that's an aluminum frame correct no it's it's polymer polymer okay, okay. Uh, and yeah it's i was I was actually pretty first impression was impressed me. Uh, Sunday I'm gonna run go run a steel match with it, so I can get and look at the price that it. That it's it like four thirty, four fifty somewhere around there. That's MSRP or something. But no, yeah, well, they're, they're, from what I found searching the internet, you get them for about three eighty nine, three nine. And magazines from them, fifteen round or seventeen round, twenty five bucks. Uh, I was going to buy a couple, but they just sent a couple extra because I need them for running the steel match. Uh, so good price on it. Trigger is not terrible. Uh, the, it measured six pounds consistently out of the box before I even shot it. So I'm guessing it'll go down to around five and a half. 
Uh, then I, I also got something else in that, that a guy that has been trying to send me for years. He's finally, I'm finally like, fine, send me one. And this thing's pretty cool. And it has something that I can actually show you guys. This right, right here is a baby Havelina RC target for airsoft. Oh, for airsoft, they say I'll shoot the crap out of that. Oh, that's cool. Well, yeah, I mean, you could destroy the car otherwise. So then, of course, see, orange tip, YouTube. Airsoft pistol. Yeah, I had it's not a real gun. That's a paint gun. It, paint gun. It, I had I I purchased this off Amazon. It is a blowback CO2 airsoft pistol. So but yeah, that's pretty cool. The dogs hate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, so but we'll run it around and you know, who knows, maybe I'll get Derek from Kids Safe Foundation to get some kids to shoot it or something. Excuse me. So that's essentially what I did. Now we can turn the floor over to Tony, who's still doing stuff. <laughs> Tony's exhausted. <clears throat> I told you guys I was coming down to Florida, so I'm in Orlando right now uh, for Ambassador Academy. And the Ambassador Academy is something put on by um, Women for Gun Rights, which used to be BC Project. They invited me down. I really appreciate it. So I'm at W-O-R, is where our family's trained, W-O-F-T. Yeah, where uh, I did the, the they also help license that light I did a review on a couple weeks ago. So they had the light there because I took their little light uh, condensed course here, and I ran it uh, one of the lights they were given, which was funny because it was Power PowerTech um, provided those, and they're in partnership with PowerTech, uh, and uh, of course they gave us stream lights uh, to run. <laughs> They gave us stream lights to run during the event. Uh, exactly, the waff light. And they were talking about how you can take the bevel off of that, put it on your ring finger, and walk around with it, you know, when you're on a plane because it's not a weapon. But you still have an impact weapon with a DNA gatherer on it. So it was really good scenario training, low light scenario training. I only posted one of me. I have two more. Uh, I thought it was really good because the scenarios were based upon questionnaires that you filled out before and how you did in your initial runs. So each run dictated what your next run would be like, and nothing was pre-made. So when you see mine, and I sound like Samuel L. Jackson got the part of Denzel Washington in training day, uh, I gave a reason if anybody read it. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people read the scenario and why I did what I did, but it was interesting because there were no, there were only wrong answers. There was no way I was going to get out of that scenario without using the firearm uh, if I wanted to live through the scenario. And I think they did a good job because they gave me two other scenarios where there was no need. I didn't go for a gun. I didn't touch a firearm and I left the situation. So I got to test some really cool guns down here. Uh, we got uh, SIGs, SIG P320s. All of the SIG P320s here have been worked over, had trigger jobs, had stuff done to them. Uh, they have the Max Michelle P320 uh, with no front sight, just an optic. Uh, they had that out today. Uh, I had the um, just just different versions. All of them have red dots look cool. Took some photos with them. They have some red, white, and blue rifles. Just some stuff for photos. And I also brought along the tandem cross uh, that they gave me. And I used that in a photo shoot because why not? They gave me pretty much most of a rifle. All I needed was my AR-15, I mean, my Ruger 1022 upper. So I took some pics with that. But, and, uh, and just a lot of other stuff going on. And I'll be talking about on this 2A4E podcast. But the gun stuff was cool. The gear stuff was cool. They have a cool store here that you can check out different things, including hybrid fire triggers. And uh, all in around, uh, I'm having a very educational experience down here. And I can't wait to get back. Oh, and I ran the Triclop sites today. So we did drills at three yards, putting multiple rounds on target as fast as possible. And one of the drills I had to pull, uh, shot to the head, two to the chest, whatever. As fast as you could. 
he came around and he was like, yo, where's the second hole in the chest? I'm like, they're both right there. Dude. Did you make so him get his yards, little card out? Rap- <laughs> Oh, dude, it was hilarious because, I mean, when you, you know, because they had a humanoid target, if you guys ever went to front side or saw front side target, humanoid target, and then they have the T-zone represented by a playing card or credit card size box. So I punched up, pow, pow, I put two there. Every time we punched out, I send around through the head. And then he wanted two through the chest, so it was, you know, pow, pow, pow. Now, he's watched me do three headshots after doing a malfunction clearance. So he had, uh, uh, what do you call it, type three malfunction where you get a double feed, got to strip the mag, strip it all out, reload it, and put two on the chest. And I put both of them through the same hole in less than six seconds. <laughs> he was like, my man. <laughs> so, so it you know, is the thought. Cool. Those Cyclops sites. Bro, those Cyclops sites. In the Florida sun, glowing like a... In the Florida sun, those Cyclops sites were glowing like a freaking red dot. Now, I didn't clean them off, so it still has, you know, the the lint you accumulate or whatever. It didn't affect them at all. Did not affect them at all. They were taken care of in the cage um, because the Triclops sites are raised up they provided an easy way for me to snap back, lock the slide in place, strip the magazine, drop it back down, rack it, reload it, and get it running because I had a solid stop, which were those metal, you know, aluminum rear sights. I think they're 70, 75 uh, aluminum, just like an AR receiver. M- made no difference. I was able to see the high-vis sights immediately, punch out, nail them. Uh, when we did one arm drills, walking away from the target, kind of uh, what do you call it, parallel to the target, because we had the split hands, no problem. The the engineer, I'm sorry, I was trying to think. Uh, his name is uh, Sean. Sean contacted me, and I said, "How do you shoot it? Do you center it? Do you close one?" He was like, "You can close one eye, and you can shoot with them both open. Just pretend the front sight." Is the dot on the red dot? Pay no attention to the rear sight. You're going to line those up automatically. Because your eyes are going to sit there just like you do an aperture sight. So I treated it like a red dot and the front green uh, fiber optic was the green dot. And it didn't let me down at all. Even when I was shooting and moving, I didn't miss it. And we know my leg is messed up. I've been in a lot of pain this week. A lot of pain. Um... Wherever I go, I have my knee iced down, whether I'm studying in class or, or riding in the car, I got my knee iced down. So I was in pain as I was shooting and moving every step hurt, and I still didn't miss the target. Nice, nice. That, that's all I want to know about the size. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah, I yeah. just I, I find those no. things I find those things so interesting since we did the review on them. And you know, I just wanted to know how they work because Probably go wind up buying a between those and the North Force arms for a uh, pistol I'm fixing to pick up. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, our bandwidth sponsor is our friends over at Patriot Patchco. As you know, they have the Patch of the Month Club. If you don't, now you do. You should go, you know, check out the Patch of the Month Club every month. You get a cool patch. I guess March patch is a leprechaun with two MP5 ish pistols. And he's riding his skateboard, so it's all luck, no skill. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, so go check it out. Go join it. Don't forget to check out our affiliate discount codes. Uh, you can save yourself some money, or even if you're not, you can give us a few pennies, one of the two. We appreciate it. Now we can t- tell Rob that he's going to be famous. The views and opinions expressed in this, expressed in this podcast are those of the individual ghost and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. Oh, you want me to be easier? No, no. Rusty, want Rust, 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 Rusty will do it. I've got this. So the main topic is sponsored by VZ Grips. VZ Grips have been manufacturing <laughs> handgun grips since 2003. 
With a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation, top tier manufacturers choose DZ grips. They come in a variety of styles, pattern, color, and are manufactured for proprietary G10, micarter, carbon fiber, or polymer. Available with a varying degree of texture, DZ offers a wide range of grips for all different firearm types. Made in the USA, VZ Grips gives you the grip you can count on. Feature grip of the week is a VZ ETC slash frag in carbon fiber. And they are for the 1911. And they are a kind of a mixture of lines and uh, uh, we call them just straight line grips like your normal wood grips would be. And then they have like a grenade tile, gr- grenade, grenade style texturing going down and they come in all different styles black and gray blue and black they got a camouflage <laughs> and um More. i just don't know yeah huh? no 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 that's, dirty olive oh uh, but that's see cute. the dirty olive aren't carbon fiber <laughs> yeah no oh, but i tell you what God. i tell you what don't let me get started on that chat yeah, please. I know. I know. So, look at the tiger stripe Mm-hmm. The orange and black tiger stripes that would look good on your 1911. The the burl or what? It, the, yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Kind of reminds you of like if if you ever looked at the um, uh, who makes those? Um, they make like the copperhead and the diamond back um, 1911s. They have all they all have snake names. Oh, was it Dan Wesson that made those? No, I can't remember, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, they have some funky colors, and that tiger strap will look good on there. Anyway, look at VZ Grips, because VZ Grips, um, if you check out their our coupon code, GGR15, gets you 15% off hang-on grips, rough grips at vzgrips.com. Woohoo. Now, I'm the main topic, so <laughs> I have a review for you. This one is the Rogue Apparatus Leather Holster. We say leather, but it functions differently. If you're watching, I do have it here. But either way, go out, go to the firearmsinsider.tv and check it out. So when it comes to everyday holsters, everybody, most people, tend to go straight to Kydex. You know, I'm pretty. I usually do also. Rogue Apparatus is here to change your your idea on that with their handcrafted leather holsters. Uh, the leather holsters rival Kydex in form and function, which I will explain later. Uh, they did send me their appendix inside the waistband holster for me to try out. This particular one, as you see it, if you're watching the video, no longer has the wing on it because I took it off <laughs> to use it as a regular IWB holster. Now, of course, first thing you notice about this thing is the leather work. Yes, it's handcrafted, which adds to the appeal, of course. Uh, they are molded to a particular firearm, as most holsters are. Uh, the particular one I have is for G19. Uh, it is green and with black dyed leather. My understanding is, is that Rogue Apparatus can pretty much do any color you want, within reason, of course. It's nicely sewn. Uh, it really is a beautiful-looking holster it's too bad it's inside the waistband so you won't see it but hey it still looks good and functions good so the holster design as mentioned rogue after added holsters mainly appendix inside the waistband i did take the wing off use it just as a straight inside the waistband it works great in that role now of course because this holsters a aiwb it does not have any adjustments for cant or right height uh, the holster uses thick quality leather as the main material. It is then partially wrapped in a thinner leather. The thinner leather also holds the screws for the DCC monoblock so that you can clip it onto your belt, of course. DCC clips are my favorite. Uh, I believe they're the best clips that I've come across. Huge advantage to the Rogue Apparatus holster is the leather treatment. This is where it gets interesting. They seal it with an acrylic resiline. By sealing the leather holster in this manner, you get qualities that are similar to Kydex. One of those, of course, is the ability of the leather holster to retain its shape better over time. It is quite stiff. Uh, Other is how the pistol kind of clicks into the holster. It's not pronounced like Kydex, but it kind of has a similar feel. It's a little different because if you use the leather holster... Leather itself gives you some retention, and then the 
the trigger guard kind of clicks into this little trigger guard spot. You get the idea, kind of. It's hard to explain. Uh, I carried it with a Lone Wolf, the Dusk 19, uh, for quite a while. Uh, I do really like the feel of the leather. Uh, it seems more comfortable next to my skin. That's always debatable, but yes, being that the holster's been sealed, it is stiffer than most leather holsters of the past. Uh, the Dust 19 slides in and out of the holster nicely with some resistance, and since the holster is hand molded, it has indents around the trigger guard right in here, similar to what Kydex would do. This helps aid in retention, of course. Uh, the rest of the retention is decent. Holster is also cut to accept a pistol with a red dot sight on it. Uh, one complaint I have about this is, is that it wasn't cut for suppressor height sights, or it's not made for them. Uh, he did tell me that they he can do them for suppressor height sights, uh, which is good to know. It's just not listed. Uh, and especially since it's cut away for the red dots was another thing where, well, you typically have higher sights for it. Rogue after Radish Holsters has a nice sweat guard, rides up the side next to your body. It's fairly stiff. It's not too large, not too small. It is a very useful size for a sweat guard. Uh, I found it actually worked really well. Uh, I mean, it, we don't sweat much here in Oregon because it doesn't get hot, but hey. Uh, holster's well designed. It did let me also get a really good grip on the pistol and loud, loud for clean draw strokes. So if you're looking for something different in a holster, maybe more of a piece of functional art, check out Rogue Apparatus Holsters. Uh, this thing functions as expected, of course. They're a holster after all. Beautiful is probably the understatement on how they look. You'll be getting a custom leather holster that should treat you well for years to come. Pretty happy with it, with this holster and what they've done with their eight IWB holsters. So we will get into the Firearms Insider Review key points. Claim to fame, of course, custom leather holster that functions like Kydex or similar to. Target market is concealed carry, of course. Features and benefits and specifications. Made of vegetable tan leather that has been custom dyed, formed, and sealed with that acrylic resolution to retain firm structure and snappier retention. Uh, it does have that discrete carry monoblock clip comes with a mod wing, which is removable, and I have removed it. <laughs> uh, and it's stitched with heavy 277 Leather Machine Company threads, which doesn't mean much to me, but they are thick threads. So, uh, Other options available, pretty much any color combo and clip style you would like. There's a what others are saying on there. There is no link to other reviews that I could find. Uh, it seems like they're fairly new at doing this. They do a lot of knife sheaths and stuff like that also. Price point. Now, it is custom leather, so it's 165 bucks. So if you need it now, you pretty much head over to Rogue Apparatus or their Etsy store. I mean, either one. Uh, check them out on Instagram, too. You can message them there. It's probably easier for a lot of people. For our rating, the pros. It does look good. It has good retention. You can get multiple color options. Uh, the DCC clip is always a favorite. Uh, and the leather feels better than Kydex. Cons, side channel's a little short. The price can be pricey. And there's no adjustable can option when you compare it to Kydex holsters of this style. I did give it a score of 8, which is great. Like I said, they did supply this holster. Uh, I had zero problems with it. And, of course, it's super rigid, which is kind of cool because old leather holsters you had to kind of watch them to make sure that they didn't wear out you just, i would still do that with this one but i think it's going to be a lot longer before that happens you guys got any questions about it uh, they they respond really quick on their instagram i messaged him the other day when you tagged me in the, the post uh, in the post yeah and uh, I messaged him the other day as just asking for like different uh, hosters, you know, what he make made for. Like uh, I was looking for one for my King Cobra inside the waistband, and uh, he said I don't have the mode, but he looked around and he said he he'll try to come up with something for it. Yeah, but they do make a lot of different range. Like I mean, the the Ruger Alaskan 
SP-101, you know, the Glocks, he makes a lot of stuff. And like I said, they respond really quick. Yeah, and they're, yeah, you know, it's been a while since I had a leather IWB holster, and I was I was pretty impressed. Like I said, if you're watching, you can see or look at the videos. The green part is, of course, the thicker part, and then they wrap. This happens to be black. They wrap it around and also holds the screws for the clip. So do they make something for a Desert Eagle? I <laughs> don't think I saw one listed, so... <laughs> <laughs> that he doesn't has something for he has something for a deal. They yeah. should, they need to make real gun holsters for real gun guys. Like like Tony says, a real man shirt, right? <laughs> yeah, everybody needs the six six X hey, gun holster. He he has he has fantastic wallets and and you know other various things you need like for like cowboy no I don't say cowboy shooting but like dice box and ammo carriers and stuff he's just not hosters he's got a, a pro, pro, pro. he's got a lot of stuff and like and like I said I think he started doing knife sheaths and he still has some of those listed and could still do those also which you know if you're looking for got a custom knife want a custom sheath that's where you head to so I guess that's the end of the rogue apparatus leather holster review now product spotlight and discussion. First up, the Military Armament Corporation 1014 Breacher. MSRP on this thing is only $599.99. I think, was it you, Tony, that said we should put this in here? It was? Okay. That's what I thought. I say 600 bucks. Because I got, it's MSRP. I mean, I saw, when I was looking for pictures, I saw this thing for, you know, 500 bucks. And How it, about we just buy it right now for three seventy three? Well, that's are you sure it's the breacher and not just a predecessor? Yes. Yeah, military armor corp, uh, Mac ten fourteen breacher twelve. Where's that at? And five plus one military armor uh, firearms depot. Sorry, okay, firearms but depot. either way, okay, there you go, and four hundred bucks out the door, pretty much. This is their what M four copy is 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 what I'm understanding it as so. It looks like the M4 does. Uh, you get semi-auto, of course, tube-fed. You get, uh, are they ghost ring style sights? It doesn't want to tell me, really. Ghost ring, blade front, also comes with a pick rail. So you can run the pick rail. It has an adjustable rear stock, pistol grip, cheek. yeah, cheek weld. Weighs yep. eight eight pounds. It's forty inches long. Choke tubes are Benelli choke tubes, and it includes three, which it says one three five. So I'm guessing something like cylinder modified full, or who knows. But there's not too much to say about this. It is twelve gauge, three inch chamber, eighteen and a half inch barrel. I don't know if you guys saw this at Shot Show. Uh, I didn't. I didn't look. I did, I did not because I didn't look for it. Uh, I don't even know how many rounds it actually holds in the in the tube. Five plus one. So five plus one. But it's eighteen and a half inches, and it's a flush tube, so you could always probably stick a longer tube on it. Uh, it looks like in the picture that the one that's on there is kind of limited anyway. Like maybe you could put another one and get an extra round or two out of it. You know, I like the M4s. Uh, so, oh, yes. go ahead, Tony. Yeah, so I was over there. All right, go ahead, man. Go ahead, finish up. I'll, no, I, I, I was going to say, I like M4s, and I hear halfway decent things about this one. Uh, and for 400 bucks, I mean, I'd be tempted to buy one just to try it out and see how well it works. Now you can have the, the, the floor, Tony. Three things happened. One, uh, Benelli's patent ran out on the recoil system. Uh, two, Turkish uh, manufacturers started making these things. They started uh, with a bunch of uh, Turkinellis, as, as, as they're starting to call informally now. And different companies are making them. I think it's maybe the same company selling under different names. And then milit- the third thing to have was Military Armory Corporation came in, which is an American company, but they're in Turkey. Pretty much is the people that work with TSOS. Unlike a lot of companies that have their stuff made in Turkey or other countries, 
Vsauce moved a guy to Turkey to be the quality control at the plant for T-Sauce. So that's where he came in. At. And while he was there, they came up with the idea of military armament uh, corporation being a higher level of T-Sauce pistols. Because SDS imports them. SDS didn't want to import a bunch of stuff that kind of sucked and then they had to send it back. So instead, they got a guy to live there and he checks it out and keeps the quality control on the TSOS stuff at a level that's acceptable for them. But they wanted it to come something at a higher level. And this is what they came up with. So I've heard nothing but good about these. And uh, these guns also use Benelli parts. So Benelli chokes, Benelli 4N. So all the stuff that fits in Benelli is going to fit this. Now, a lot of people are like, it only holds five rounds. Your Benelli only holds five rounds when it gets in this country. They put the magazine tube extension on it. That's that's the law. Mm -hmm. And they also sell the magazine tube extension for $59. This <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it comes with that. You get the uh, M uh, Mac 2 Tactical Magazine tube, uh, which is it says plus six, extension plus six. And then it comes with uh, and then $29 for barrel clamp. So again, everything I've read, thing runs. See the shot show. That's one thing. Now, I live in Jersey. I can't have a semi-automatic with a pistol grip. I can't have a semi-automatic with a pistol grip. But they make wooden stock ones with the hog leg. And I dig that. And uh, I, I want one. So I'm going to contact them about that. Now, the hard thing about this is I'm going to ask for it for the diversity shoot. But once I get it, I got to run because most of our events inside, I can only run buckshot or slugs. In. So that's going to be telling. But because it has that gas system in it, it should work well. I think I 100 percent believe if it lives up to the high they will sell a metric ton of these. A metric ton. Because we're talking sub $600 semi-automatic copy of one of the most dependable shotguns the Marine Corps ever used to the point the SAS just bought them off the shelf. The SAS didn't even send them through qualifications. They just bought them like a civilian shotgun and put them in the hands of their uh, troops. So if this is just as good, I think it'll be a great deal. Every video I've watched, it, and you know, we can we can start talking about were these given to the YouTubers or whatever, you know, because I think I made a post the other day about, you know, we give honest reviews. Honest reviews are not dead. We give honest reviews. But everything I've seen, and I even the the, the American guy that that's with the with Mac, he said that he's got several thousand rounds to his without any malfunctions. And the, it's an auto-tuning gas system, the way I understand, that will go from bird shot to buckshot to slugs, whatever. This thing will tune and go. And we all know the Benelli M4 is probably one of the greatest shotguns that's ever been made. And, and it just, it runs. And this company here is really taken off with it because they've got so many different models. they got the Woodstock model right here without the pistol grip. And and I'm looking at I'm looking at Bud's guns, and they got the pistol grip models, and the the, the breacher's not in stock, but the, all the other ones are, and they're from three hundred fifty four dollars to three hundred eighty nine dollars. So, and if you can get a gun for that price for four hundred four hundred a quarter, that will run. I mean, you you cannot ask for anything more than that with a semi auto because you can't buy a quality pump shotgun for that price and expect it to run all the time reliable that has the history that that has if they're using the same quality that the Benelli is. And that's, that I think is the only question is, is if yeah. the quality, so if the same quality I parts. I've got the Breda M3 Super 90, which is basically a pump or semi-automatic shotgun that makes this look like, a, this looks like a POS, but <laughs> you know, anyways, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, this is kind of cool. It should make it look like a POS. How much did you pay for it? <laughs> you don't want to know. 
Yeah, I, I didn't want exactly. to say anything. Because I've run that same gun and you got. I don't own it, but I've run it. And oh, I, I know it. how I know how it runs. And but some of us like me, I try to keep my reviews for like people like me that can afford that three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollar gun. We can't afford that fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred dollar shotgun. So Dude, I'd not pay fifteen hundred bucks for this shotgun. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> it's when he bought it. I didn't even pay grand for it. Okay, I bought this like ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so what? What I'm saying is, 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 I, I look at, I look at stuff that, that maybe you can't afford that Benelli or or Beretta price tag or name, but somebody's making it off of like old machinery or old patents and they're doing it just as good. And, and I hate using just as good, but man, just as good, just as good. If it's, if it's quality, it runs. How, how many people do you know besides these shooters that shoot clays and ski and that run 2000 rounds a year through a shotgun? Most people won't even put 2000 rounds a year, uh, a, a lifetime through a shotgun. Have a and even if they're, even if they, even if they're not talking this style, but just talking duck hunters, bird hunters, exactly. I mean, exactly. yeah, they're still not going to push 2000 rounds probably in a lifetime. When I, when I did my, when I did my review on that Steven shotgun and it was 200. Yeah. Whatever it is. Before I ever wrote the review, I had 150 rounds of slugs through it. I messaged Tony. This is before I was ever on the show. And I was like, I run this with an optic on it, and I beat the crap out of my shoulder with it. And then I run a bunch of buckshot and birdshot, and I've used this thing turkey hunting. I've used it squirrel hunting and everything else. But anyway, it's you know just you know it's a clone of something else that Turkey is putting out really good quality stuff, and T sauce is really doing the same thing now. Right, and this. So, that's that's where I'm, that's why I'm getting at. They're they're making it affordable for the average Joe to be able to buy and steal our groceries. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So that is the Mac Ten Fourteen Breacher. Hey Rob, you you, you want to read the next ad? I would absolutely love to. <laughs> Talking Walker Defense Research, right? Yeah, that sounds good. Walker Defense provides shooters with the finest, most innovative quality tactical accessories and firearm components around. From their Nile grip panels to the Nero muzzle brakes, no details are ever left behind. Only top quality materials are used in the manufacturing process. Together, all of this gives you some of the best firearm performance around. Everything they have to offer is proudly made in the USA. Walker Defense, where American ingenuity meets bleeding edge technology. And our Walker Defense product of the week is their custom combo Nile grip panels. And remember, if you go to walkerdr.com, use the code INSIDER15 for 15% off everything on their website. And I have to say, I bought the Walker Defense Bolt Carrier Group. Paid for it myself. Didn't ask Walker Defense. I probably could have, but I didn't ask them for anything. I bought that bolt, and I tell you what, it makes a big difference. <laughs> when you it get is. a quality bolt carrier group, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Piss on these ninety-nine and hundred nine-dollar bolt carrier groups you see that everybody has posted by the Walker Defense. I paid whatever it was plus our less our discount. Right, right. And, and I run it on that that cheap build that I built that I've spray painted. I posted up that I don't even know what all parts I have on that thing. But and I put it in there. I was like, it's a ten and a half inch barrel, and I was like, I could notably, noticeably tell a difference. And that's just like the nickel boron one or whatever. Their yeah, standard, yeah, nickel, the standard bolt yeah. carrier. Yep, yep. I, I couldn't imagine the titanium. I want the oh, titanium. The titanium my, uh, is. <laughs> I, you don't even have a clue. That thing. Yeah. I. I mean, you'll need a adjustable gas block, but that thing is. I, I, my six, my, my ten and a half inch has one, and then I got a sixteen inch with adjustable because I I swap out suppressors on them. Yeah, and it, if I'm going hunting, I might swap them out, and then I have my three hundred blackout, which is used the same boat carrier group. I, it has adjustable gas block on yeah. it, and I, I and I couldn't tell you who they were, but they're the ones with like uh, 
six or ten, six six different clicks. Is it like the su- will, superlative arms ones or what? Or yes, something like that. Yeah, I paid a hundred bucks for the gas yeah, blocks yeah. for each gun, so I bought them all at one time. So I spent like three hundred and fifty bucks shipping a handle for three different gas blocks. Yeah, but they go click, 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 so you know where you're at. Yep, yep. It, it's it's just not tuning like you know. We'll turn a little bit. No, no. But, I mean the little ones know. are great if you're just building something and you like you're building like a ten and a half inch or something and you're not setting it up for suppressed, you just want it to run consistently and not beat you to death. The screw in ones are fine then because you're just gonna lock it down and never adjust it. If you're going suppressed, unsuppressed, the click style ones are the way to go. Yes. Because yeah. I made sure when I when I bought that when I bought that I I bought uh, four arms that where I can get a tool in there real mm. quick, adjust them back because that's a big thing. Yep, yep. But anyway, that's enough about the walker. To yeah, pick. yeah. I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> well, that you know that's that's always good to hear too. Uh, but of course, you know we 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 tend to not just have lame companies as sponsors. <laughs> if you notice, yeah. yeah. I mean, we I try to do a decent job of getting decent sponsors and Walker defense makes fantastic stuff. And I say that not just because they're a sponsor, but I've used enough of their stuff to know, uh, which leads us to another good company that we tend to like, but they're not a sponsor and that's Gideon optics. And we're talking about their advocate today. MSRP is two hundred twenty nine ninety nine, And of course, if you use the code GGR, you get 10% off that. So it'll save you what? 22 to, 23 bucks or something to that effect. This is the Gideon Optics 1X Micro Prism. Uh, it is 1 by 20 millimeters, if that helps. Of course, it comes with a versatile pick rail mount. They say it's lightweight, rugged aircraft aluminum housing, etched reticle, of course, because it's a prison. It's 6061 aircraft aluminum. The they, it, I'll explain the reticle here in a minute. They say it's shockproof to 1,000 Gs, water for 30 minutes up to one meter. So when Rusty takes it into the water to go kill a boar or something, it won't die. <laughs> uh, windage elevation adjustments are 90 MOA. They are one MOA click adjustments. They say, of course, it has eight daytime settings, two night vision compatible. Powered by a CR2032, they say it gives up to 30,000 hours battery life, uh, and it does have battery-saving technology, which is motion-activated illumination. So it turns off after four minutes, and then, of course, turns on when you move it. Features a shooter-friendly 85-millimeter eye relief, and if you know anything about this, the eye relief on it, that's what they say, but... You can definitely get a lot more out of it if you want before you get the triangle too small in the prism. Parallax free to 100 yards, 79-foot field of view at 100 yards. That's why. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Well, and it's a 1X prism, so you shoot. You can shoot with two eyes open anyway. So as, as most people know, I was looking for a weight on it, but I didn't see a weight. Might have to go somewhere else to find that out I don't, it's ak compatible <laughs> i bet you it's scar compatible too With that thousand, <laughs> i that know thousand g's of force I, it ought to be i know the guy that yeah, that works there if you notice hey, I, have a, I have a scar 17 or scar 16 i'll be more than glad to test it out the did you, know what, you notice nobody. the picture in the video for this show it's on a the guy that works there has it mounted on a 12 gauge shotgun <laughs> So well, I'm going to tell you, most everybody we run into a shot show kind of they blew smoke at Rob and turned their head before it got in his face and uh-huh. walked away when he's like, you know what? Tell me about, you know, will it work on a scar? <laughs> they just ignored scar it. 16. Yeah. Uh-huh. 308 scar. Yeah. yeah and they're like, yeah. nope. It's like, okay. Now, Rob's so heart he was, was scarred. Yeah. He I think it was. Now, I'll get into the reticle. It's a simple, it is a circle triangle so it's got a triangle instead of a dot in the center and it's offset so of course you get i don't know i think it's a 65 moa or something close to that circle just kind of like most red dots stuff like that then there's a triangle in the middle or a little bit below the middle so the top point of the triangle is your center so your center dot 
close range, it doesn't matter. And then you can go out a little farther with the bottom of the triangle. I don't know exactly what the range is. Uh, I should have probably done my homework and ask, but you know, it is what it is. It exactly. I'm trying, to find a, I'm trying to find a calculation somewhere, but they don't it's have a, it on their website. It's a, it's a with the it's a two hundred dollar one X prism. Good company. We know that we we know the guys. <laughs> We've done them forever. Yeah. At least Tony Actually, and I have. I was thinking about something like this for my um, PS ninety, and and something like that would be awesome. Simple reticle. Of course, you can get it in red or green. Uh, if if you were looking for you know green or so red, Indian, if you if you want somebody to test this out on a PS ninety, I would love to test this out on my and PS ninety. I'm pretty sure it uses a standard like T one T two footprint. So you can pretty much put it on any mount you want. If you're looking at, if you don't like the one that it comes with, uh, but I, I'm a big fan of one X prisms, especially on certain things. I would love, I'm, I'm waiting, but I need a, I think I need a one X prism for this Fox shot mic. Cause I put my old hollow sun five Oh three on it, which is a decent red dot, but because I'm old and have astigmatism, had that forever prisms work better and i like the fact that if the battery does die i still have a reticle you know that's that's just yeah. a big plus now, now my question is they don't have anything listed but will a magnifier work with this one i know there's like one or two other companies that have magnifiers that will work with it when i ask at shot show they said it will now, okay. don't that's just don't take my word for it. If you're if you're curious, send them a message. Send me a message, and I'll I'll ask them and get back to you. So because this fires with stuff like this, and I just don't like them. I mean, it, it, it doesn't work. I've got EOTech with the magnifier. I just don't like it. It, it, it it's kind of a pain in the ass. I I like a magnifier, but it's got to be the magnifier with a mount that actually moves over nicely. Mm -hmm. out of the way i don't like the push button magnifier releases because that that defeats the whole point of having to mm -hmm. grab it and flick over mm -hmm. because if you if i need to just i, I like prism side i run prism on several of my rifles that i hunt with and um they're from another company and they're fantastic because mm -hmm. if I, the battery is dead i still have got an x an x reticle on there and um and I like it because I don't get any blur, but it would be nice to have a small prism like this that does have, yes, that does have a magnifier. Like if you need to stretch 350 to make sure the horns are four inches or you need to take a little more detailed shot because that's, that's the way things are going now. And, but that magnifier right there, Gideon has come a long way. Buddy, because I've got I've got one of their optics, and I tell you what, it's I run it on my Glock, and it's just fantastic. Yeah, I I would still love to have one of those the, the, one of those uh, optics on my PS ninety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So send, send Chad a message with a uh, with a uh, silencer on it. Tony, you got anything, or did you fall asleep? He's bored. No, nope, I'm fighting off sleep. <laughs> I'm fighting sleep off while I'm doing something else, but um. I like a prism, uh, prism optic. Uh, we know Gideon makes good stuff. Uh, I just installed the green dot they gave me onto my 1022 uh, with the thing uh, that lowered the sand panel cross gave me. So I can't run it. Wait to start running that. It seemed like it'll be a good thing to go on that ranch rifle too. Definitely low mounted optic because of the way the stock is. So it's not going to have to need it's not going to need the same riser as an AO fifteen does. I mean, even though it comes with it, right? I'm just saying when sometimes some this is what I like, and I'll go ahead and say we've come to a time where everything doesn't have to be a T one anymore and an aim point, or you know it, it, we don't have to spend seven hundred or more dollars on a quality optic. We're getting to the point where it's broken the three hundred dollar mark, well, and it, Gideon Optics is one of those. Yeah, points. it's. It's. I mean, with our discount, it's like two hundred bucks or just a hair over. 
this company has become one of the market disruptors when it comes to getting decent, good optics out to the public. And I think companies like Gideon, even though I know Vellner, but he needs to get, be given credit because not only is it Gideon Optics, but the other companies he owns that fights for everyday people on his firearms. He keeps the prices low and he gives the people, uh, allows the American people to be armed. And yep. I'd be more than happy to test this out in <laughs> Rob, Rob, so, <laughs> you know, Rob wants a, want, needs two of them, one for his <laughs> yes, scar and one for scar. So that that was the Gideon Optics Advocate. Next up, this is thanks to Rusty, or I think the Bursa TPR9 XT. Now, here's the kicker. MSRP is $899.99 on this thing. So you're looking at $900. I'm like, I'm I me personally, I see Bursa and I see nine I see nine hundred bucks. I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second. But just yeah, yeah, exactly. It is nine millimeter. It is hammer fired. It's full size pistol. It's seventeen plus one rounds. It basically has a five inch barrel. It's an aluminum frame. Rusty, what are you smoking? <laughs> it's wait, the, wait, wait, oh, wait, just wait, buddy. Just, just wait, wait. wait. It is d- double single action. Weighs thirty four ounces. Like I said, it is hammer fired. Has manual safety, complete ambi out of the box. You're looking at, let's see, what am I missing here? Uh, it is optics ready, maybe. Uh, it doesn't really say, but it looks like it's got a little plate where no. it, it's not. No. It, nope. It's not. Why do they put two I, screws in the top? <laughs> uh, they say the trigger I, pulls about five pounds. Go on, Rusty. All right. So, so we are... We are regionally, culturally fixated on our guns, United States. We don't go outside. We don't tend to look outside what everybody else is running or what everybody else is doing. Sure we do. I, I've, I've been shooting an EAA witness for years along with CZs. I mean, I go outside okay. the box. <laughs> okay. So, okay. You, you, you brought that up. EAA witness. CZ. EAA they have parts compatible. Their, their, their parts are readily available. CZ, you got to beg for parts when you own the gun. True. Uh, everybody, everybody just shook their head there. So EA, you get their parts. Their guns are run till they till they just damn fall apart, and then you just buy parts from from their website, put it together. CZ, you got to be a fanboy and get it. Okay, well, let's get back to Bursa. This sounds good. Okay, so Bursa, this is their competition model. They do have the regular uh, TPR-9, which a lot of Argentina Special Forces are running. They're running this gun. This gun has been running in law enforcement, Special Forces hands all over the world. We just don't see it because it hasn't been in the United States yet. This gun is proven. This gun is ready to roll. It's a competition model. This gun... I Now... I'm not. I'm not trying to rep for Bursa or anything. They're not paying me to say anything. I did some deep diving on this, and, and I read some articles and I watched some videos that I could not understand nothing that they were saying. This gun is reliable. It's you look at it as it's almost like a like CZ uh, seventy five, and then like a Sig P two two six kind of like got together and had a baby. And that's what you kind of get. That's just the way I take it. No, that's kind of what I, I, I get at. Yeah, it's kind of what I see. And and because you see the way the, the way it slides on the rails, then you look at this. You look at the grips. The stocks on it is a kind of a uh, P two two six ish style. So and it's I like the fact that it's double action hammer fired. A lot of people go, oh, striker fired. I like a double action hammer fired pistol. For those who are new into uh, concealed carry, especially at Phoenix waistband, some people like the fact that, that they can decock it or they have a hammer. They know it's down. You know, you're not striker firing. You got that long double pull on the trigger. But this gun, this gun's been proven. Bursa has come a long way from the days of the the the, the cheap thunders. And I'm not saying it's because I got a deal on my Bursa Thunder 22 at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, no. 
whatsoever. This gun right here, when I seen this gun, I texted everybody. I was like, look at this damn thing. I didn't even know it was out. And I, I got really stoked about it because I can't afford a 226. You can find this one for 770 bucks right now at, at different companies that on the market right now. See, and, and one of the problems... One of the problems with Versa is everybody expects it to be cheap. And it's like, because Americans, really, we are ignorant as hell when it comes to anything but the top three. When it comes to any gun made outside of America, if it ain't a Glock or SIG or an HK, we don't know anything about it. People barely know what CZ is. Versa came into this country with their 380 uh, that looked like the James Bond thing, so everybody got the knockoff. Everybody got that. They ran it. They put garbage ammo in it because it was at a $200 price point. Meanwhile, Versa owns a whole nother market of guns. whole nother market that we don't know anything about. AR, am I breaking up? Only a teeny bit. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and- okay, so that was the problem. So now they have a whole level of guns out there that have been proven in other nations, in other police forces, with their special forces, with their SWAT teams. We were we were over there waiting. I forgot why we were over there. I think it was waiting for I was waiting to do an interview or something. And we saw the 1911s, and that's what got us over because I was paying attention to the 1911s from Bursa. Did you go over and touch them first? Did you call me over, Rusty? You're like, yo, check this out. Yeah, yeah. The, and the, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get over it and I, I'm like, because I'm thinking like, Rob, it's like, okay, you know, I know they're making 1911s, but they're making the 1911s here. What's this? Trigger pull was crazy. Double action trigger pull was crazy. Mm-hmm. Single action trigger pull was real smooth. Now, yeah, only downside, they don't have an optic check, which is weird because it is a competition pistol, but it is that this is their duty weapon. I, I I put it at the equivalent of a Glock thirty four. Well, yeah, and like and, it, it is a Glock thirty four to a duty Glock seventeen. Well, see, but and and that's kind of the same thing. But here's here's what I don't get. I I mean, yeah, I know maybe it's new and this is their competition pistol, but like you said, no optics cut. But when you go down mm-hmm. to just the TPR nine, now granted it's. Mm-hmm three quarters of an inch barrel less and it's their actual duty pistol same magazines same double single trigger teeny bit lighter because it's not basically a five inch frame now because it's not competition frame has a rail on it the xt does not have a rail on it just go with me here but the gun is 400 bucks cheaper i'm like okay so if you mm-hmm. if you're making the xt version are you hand fitting this? You know, put something in there that says that it's worth four hundred bucks extra. That's that's what totally I don't get. Understand. I can no. knock that. That that that's just my thought. Well, but when you pick them both up, because my thought was the same thing as yours. I am like, yo, bro, why don't you put this trigger from this competition gun in this duty gun? Because it would make sense. So what's the difference in between them? Because I'm just picking up. Like, I picked up the duty guns and I ran for them, right? Pulled the trigger, racked the slide, did everything. And I'm not going to say it was, it wasn't like, uh, these are nasty, but there's just nothing outstanding about them. This is a $400 hammer fired gun from Argentina. Right. But then when I picked up the other one, again, it was thrown in the corner, bro. It's not even like they had like big, big signs around it going, look at this, look at this. It was glass it was just, breaking on the trigger. I'm, right. I'm just saying. Yeah, so I, I don't know what the hell was. So I don't, I don't know. I've got to the point in my life when I'm spending money, my money, when I can put that, pick that gun up and I can pull that trigger and I can close my eyes, I don't give a damn if it's a high point. If that trigger snaps and it feels good in my hand, that gun's going home with me because that trigger makes a big difference. Oh, it does. If it's from the factory. Yeah, yeah. And and they've put that time into it. And I, I don't understand why they don't have it in their duty gun. But this gun made a lot of sense to me because it's a competition model. And I made a comment here the other week when we talked about one of the competition model pistols they had. I was like, why on the hell are we putting a pick rail on a competition model? Because 
if I'm shooting competition, I'm not waiting the gun. I know that's what the right. the comeback was, but this thing, this could be your duty gun. This could be your competition model. This could be somebody who doesn't have CZ money, doesn't have staccato money, but wants to get out there and run an iron sight division in a, in a beginner's class of high, high capacity, nine millimeter guns. That's double single action. And once you run that double single action for a while, you're going to be very proficient with it. You'll never notice that double, that double action trick. See, and that's, that's the thing is like, I would have to shoot this, like maybe yeah. next to a CZ. I know you can't part, CZ parts are hard to find. There's aftermarkets, but you can get comparable CZ models for the same price. Are you looking at? Is this better? Yeah, that's why side by side would be a lot. You can get. You can get comparable CZs at the price, but a comparable CZ is not going to have this trigger. I mean, we're talking. I mean, uh, no, right, understand. Right. CZs have good triggers, but it's a duty weapon. And when you get to the point of that competition weapon, you're at a totally you're, different price point. Yeah, you're looking talk, at twelve hundred. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking, talking Ford, Ford Escorts and Corvettes. I mean, get away! I, I, I mean, I'm if we're going to compare, I'd love to, to, to put a few rounds behind this gun before I trash it totally. You know? Yeah. Uh, because my whole thing is this. There are other countries out there that run stuff. I ran in the SAR at the Great American Outdoor Show. Now, they admit it to uh, tinkering with their show guns. Their, their show firearms, they tinkered with them to make them much smoother. He didn't say, now, he was, I'm assuming he's telling me the truth because he was talking about his revolvers. And he did. He said we didn't do that through our CZ clones. So I'm looking at this, thinking this was a competition gun. They weren't hyping it at all. They didn't have it on any kind of pedestal. And if Rusty wasn't just going through the guns on that end of the line, we wouldn't have seen them at all. Because like I was looking for that 22 Thunder threaded model. That's when he first initially said something to me about it. I said I don't care about those. I want this Thunder over here that's threaded for my suppressor. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. You really got to come over here and look at this. Yeah, yeah. That's how this. That's that's how this whole system broke hey, down. That that, that 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 works. That works. So I want one. I want to see. Yeah, I want. I want one. I want to see what it's like. Um, and, I'd love to have just another firearm company that gives you the ability to step into. Um, because again, I'm I'm requesting people shoot their guns in local range competitions without breaking the bank. And if you can get a $700 competition gun that you can shoot stock iron sights, why the hairy heck not? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and to get off the of subject, just a touch, Tony, you're talking about the SAR, the other Aaron, mm-hmm. black, black Aaron, there's not Aaron. Remember we sat with it, shot show while we eat lunch from the, uh, the, the head, the guy there that used to work for SAR, who's with the podcast reviewers now. Remember who he was talking to? At no. shot, what about at, at what range, was that? I'm sorry. At, at <laughs> shot show. When was it range day? Remember the, the 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 black guy that sat with us. Everybody called him Aaron. And he said his name's not Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy from uh, the classic firearms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, yes. so they got a guy that works with them who was a big wig with SAR. Who works for them? Oh, I know. Kaya. Yeah. He was a yeah, police Kaya. officer um, oh. who, ca- who carried a SAR and also is still in good with SAR. He says, I can't say a damn thing bad about SAR. So if we don't know about these guns in other countries, these guys have carried these guns in other countries. Don't snob your nose to a lower priced Argentina, Turkish, or whatever. Gun. This, this is what I'm saying. We know people Kaya, who carry these. Was that? On duty. Kaya yeah. was FBI. Kaya was FBI in America. Yeah. And he's telling you he rocked the SAR and didn't have a problem with it. So, yeah. again, we, we have to wake up and realize other countries aren't a bunch of bulls in our countries with gun culture. I mean, we have Americans now just finding out about CZs, bro. <laughs> That's, this is true. This is <laughs> like, true. Check, check, check yourself to act like, <laughs> you know, because your American rifle and magazine subscription, it, it doesn't make you all knowing. It's the internet age now, man. There's a lot of countries. Some make garbage, some make good guns. We're hoping this is a good gun. We've yeah. only dry fired it. 
um, we're telling you, check yourself because it could be something awesome and you are ahead of the curve. I mean, my, my CZs were 89 and 91. When we were telling people those were good guns, people weren't listening. Think about the dudes that brought back uh, Browning High Powers from Vietnam. Oh. You know, the P, and they, they're trying to tell people about them or the guys that freaking had them in World War II and nobody wanted to hear it. And now all of a sudden, Americans are crying because what? Browning, I mean, uh, FN stopped making high powers like a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Like, since 1935, dude. We, we poo-pooed them for 70 years. And now all of a sudden, you want to be on the cutting edge of something. So sometimes it's cool to give somebody a chance and maybe get ahead of the curve. Or they have garbage. And guess what? You own a Betamax now. Good job. <laughs> hey, it, it happens. <laughs> so I... On, on that, you know, thanks to Tony, we have a show title. <laughs> uh, that was the Bursa TPR9 XT. Now, I'm going to read this because Tony's gotten out kind of. Ha ha. Primary Arms seeks to provide you the best shopping experience for everything firearms. And, of course, I hit my keyboard and it homed out. So... They do have over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, including a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and that expert support team if you happen to need it. Don't forget to check out the Primary Arms line of optics. We love them here, and you probably will too. So our Primary Arms product of the week this week is the Streamlight TLR1 HL in FDE. Why? Because it looked like something that you guys needed to check out. So find everything you need by heading over to primaryarms.com. Uh, I did notice the other day when I was looking for stuff on Foxtrot Mike, they do carry some Foxtrot Mike products at Primary Arms. Just for your information. There is no listener feedback, so now Tony gets to talk. Because he's going to be busy. Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm going to be real busy, bro. All right, so our next diversity shoot is Thursday. I don't even know what Thursday is. I think it's day after tomorrow. I'm going to be very busy. I can't wait to kick it off. We're already selling tickets. We're going to have some awesome swag. It's going to be at Guns High at Ranger Woodland Park. We're going to shoot lots of guns. We're going to have lots of fun. I can't wait to see you there. That's Woodland Park, 6.30, excuse me, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Gun for High Range, Woodland Parks, 15 minutes outside of New York City. So when you guys hear about it, this show, if you're not listening tonight, it was over. You missed it. It was awesome. And uh, you got to make the next one. So go to diversityshoot.com, look what we do, support the work we do, and get ready for the next giveaway because it's going to include another cool knife and a whole bunch of shot show swag. As always, thank you all for supporting me and allowing me to come down and take part in training like I've been today for this whole week. Have a good one. I really appreciate it. Woo-hoo. So you can send us questions, comments, or feedback to gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review somewhere. And most important, check out the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv. There's a bunch of reviews over there. We've been trying to pump them out. You can also check us out on Facebook, X, and Instagram at Firearms Insider. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get notified when the live shows are on Tuesdays. Or, you know, maybe watch a short or two, something like that. Don't forget to check out our great sponsors. And thank you for listening to the largest pound-for-pound podcast on the network. And he even can wear a small shirt or whatever size it was. (laughs) and we are out Epstein didn't kill himself thank you this podcast has been a production of the Firearms Radio Network for more visit firearmsradio.net